So, hi, Maria. I started to uh, explore more about some devices I could use or something that could help me. And uh, I also read about some Botox injections and so on. But at that time, I was not even in college and I was not working and, you know, it's expensive and yeah. so on. But I also found uh, some creams that were kind of supposed to help. I don't remember the exact name now because it was many years ago. Hmm. But I was trying that first and nothing helped, <laughs> really nothing helped. Uh, and then I found about eontophoresis. And I saw some devices. I first watched on YouTube how it is done and how it looks. Uh, I couldn't, and I still don't know the explanation why exactly it works, <laughs> uh, but I'm glad it does. <laughs> so and, uh, I first mentioned that uh, device for antiphoresis to my parents, and for a long time they were still, we don't know, do you need it? Or did you try, I don't know, washing your hands or use that cream? <laughs> or, I don't know, I'm washing my hands my whole life, it doesn't help. <laughs> and then... Um, they actually bought me the device i'm really thankful for that and i started using it um actually before they bought the device uh we actually paid in one clinic that uh had that the antiphoresis machine so that i could try it in few treatments so to see if it works and then when i saw it works we bought the device and now i still have it at home here in the wardrobe uh it sits ready for this evening <laughs> And um, I still use it and now, it's been six or seven years. Did you ever see a doctor to get diagnosed or did you have to diagnose yourself, basically? Uh, I kind of diagnosed myself, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, when I went to that clinic to find, uh, to uh, try the treatments, before I bought the device, uh, first I had to go to the doctor, like for the first checkup to see my hands and so on. Now I remember one time before I went to the doctor mm -hmm. uh, because I actually had some rash, mm -hmm. uh, but it was, um, yeah, it was rash on my hands, like between fingers, something like that. And I went for that and I know I already knew it was from sweat. And I was trying to explain to the doctor, it was a dermatologist. Uh, I was trying to explain that it was, it is because my hands are sweaty all the time mm -hmm. uh, and that I'm really careful about my hygiene. I wash it. I also used um, some other things that help with disinfect and so on. But the doctor was actually really mean <laughs> and she said uh, she never saw anything like that, that it's not normal, she can't even take a sample or a look at it properly because it's all sweaty and she was really mean to me. That is so awful! <laughs> I and mean, that is so awful and she never even heard about, about hyperhidrosis. Uh, she was a dermatologist. I, yeah, she was a dermatologist uh, yeah. and then I know I was really uh, mad at that woman and I also drove home with my parents and I was crying in the car. That's <laughs> and awful. It was really, yeah, it was really <laughs> bad experience at that time. I was maybe, I don't know, 15 or 16. Oh, that's a, such a sensitive age as well. Yes. It's, yes. Uh, I mean, uh, I get, I, I, mean, I must stay a little bit in this uh, story because I think this is one of the main reasons uh, that I want to talk about this because uh, I mean, so many stories with this uh, approach. Uh, I mean, if they don't know about the diagnosis still, uh, you can be a little bit sensitive. I mean, you have a teenager, 15 year old girl talking about a problem and uh, coming down on her like that, like it's her, her her fault. It's just awful. And I mean, we hear this, we hear this still. I mean, you are 25 now, you said, and yes. you were maybe 15 then. So that might have been around 2011 or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. I mean, it's not 100 years ago. It's still hap happening now and it's happening everywhere. I mean, in Croatia, in Sweden, all over the world, people uh, are going to doctors that don't know about the condition, uh, don't care about the condition, and they are treating the patient. And they are, what was it like for you? I mean, to take this, you were mad at her, you said, but I mean, 
doesn't it make you question yourself in some ways also to be treated like that or what happened with you when, well, when yeah, you said you know, that it, it goes back to that maybe something really is wrong with me if the doctor doesn't know how can i know better maybe it really has to do something with uh Maybe I'm too emotional, maybe I'm always under stress, maybe I can't calm down. But part of me kind of knew that the doctor is also wrong because there are other examples and I also saw internet, people having this problem. I was just, um, I had a feeling that I had to fight for myself because there was no one on my side, no one knew about that and I had to like explain to everyone. I think it's moving actually to hear you say that uh, at such a young age to realize that okay I have to fight for myself now I have to I have to teach them I have to teach uh, the doctors my parents yeah. I have to teach <laughs> everyone so I think that's what we're trying to do here as well you know sp spread the word and I think you're I think you're really brave uh, to share your story oh, thank you. uh, you've come a long way I think uh, thank you I mean I still am I'm not sure that I will ever be completely 100% okay with that because there is always some shame in some situations. Yes. Uh, for example, um, I try to do it regularly, this into courses, mm -hmm. but sometimes, you know, I have some wounds on my hand or something like that that goes too deep that not even if I put uh, sometimes I use like Vaseline or one cream aquaphor yeah. uh, that uh, makes it like a barrier so that uh, it, it doesn't affect my skin in that way. to protect that uh, area. Yeah. It's too painful and I just can't do it. And sometimes uh, I also, you know, it's time consuming, but I do think it's really helpful device and it kind of saved my life. <laughs> <because> <laughs> I know that um, every time when, for example, I have something that some interview or something that um, that uh, I know I will have to use my hands, I do it more regularly and it really helps. I feel normal again, but it's still kind of, you know, painful to explain it over and over again to people, although I am more comfortable with myself way more than I was before. It really does help because, um, you know, it maybe just takes time. For example, it usually does, um, my hands are usually dry maybe after five to six treatments. Mm -hmm. And good. then it would be also be, it would also be good if I do it every day or every other day. If I have maybe too much days in between, then I feel like it's not affecting the way it should. So when I have anything important, I try to do it as regularly as possible. But in everyday life, I would say I do it maybe three times a week, sometimes less, sometimes more. When I start to see the effect of anti forces, then it's really completely dry. And sometimes I have a feeling like uh, my hands want to sweat, like I have a tinglish <laughs> feeling, the sweat wanting to try to come out, but it just doesn't <laughs> there is it a word for that actually it's called really? it's called phantom sweats oh yeah phantom yeah i have phantom sweats then sometimes <laughs> <laughs> it's really i don't yeah. know about that yeah it is it is pretty That's common cool. like that it, it is thought that the nerve signals are just still coming from the brain and going through the hand to the hands but at the end they, know they, cannot... where they need to go but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's good but it, it's really nice that it just doesn't come out so my hands are dry and i can just yeah it's and I, that is actually the only thing that i tried i didn't try anything else mm -hmm. uh, once i was thinking about botox injections but um, I'm still kind of maybe afraid to do it. I um, sometimes read that it can hurt. Yes. I don't know how true that yeah, is. It, it, yeah, it can and be quite also, painful. Yeah. And the price is big. 
I mean, at least here in Croatia, is a bit big, and it's also not permanent. I think the the things you mentioned there with Botox, the price. Uh, I mean, in Sweden, uh, in many cases, you can get it for your hands and armpits um, uh, for free. Uh, so that's a good thing. But in most countries, it is pretty expensive, and then uh, you, you have the pain. And uh, some clinics use uh, pretty powerful anesthetics, but otherwise, it can be quite painful. And it's very different how you perceive pain but it, it can be painful because it's it, it is usually about 50 or 60 injections per hand and it can be uh, compared to a bee sting I think so it can be quite uh, painful um, and then also for you working in the lab uh, we also would have to consider uh, the the, the, this grip can be affected, this muscle can be weakened. So if you're doing this, for example, yes. uh, it, yeah, oh, okay. it could be uh, uh, affected. So you become a lot weaker in this grip. So I, I say that iron phoresis is probably a better choice for you than Botox anyways. So you figured it out already. <laughs> uh, at my work, I started to work uh, two months ago. And on my second day uh, to the girl that was showing me the laboratory work because I was new, I told her that I have a problem with sweaty hands and that I have that problem right now in the moment and that I don't want to make the wrong impression that I'm nervous or something like that. It's just something that I have and that I can control. Mm -hmm. And she was a bit, uh, I would say at the same time, surprised that I have that and surprised that I just said it to her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But she just kind of said, okay, and accepted and everything was completely fine. So uh, now I'm going on classes and I started to try. Mm -hmm. And before my first class, I was really afraid because even um, if I do, uh, for example, I into courses every day, it really helps and my hands are really dry. But when I'm driving a car, I was too afraid that for some reason they will start to be sweaty again. Mm. Maybe because I'm nervous for real or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then uh, I bought uh, gloves, like kind of gloves that maybe you would wear to a gym, something like that. Mm, yeah. And when I came on my first lesson, I just told directly to my instructor that I need to wear gloves because I have a problem with sweaty hands and I told him that it's not just because I'm nervous but because I really have a condition. I told him how it is cold yeah. <laughs> and he was actually kind of interested in it and mm -hmm. he looked kind of worried and he asked can you control it what do you do do you use something for it and i was <laughs> talking to him about anti-poverty on my first driving uh, lesson and it went completely cool and now um, i was maybe on five classes and every time when i just sit, sit in the car i uh, immediately put on gloves he doesn't ask anything it just kind of became a normal thing that's really great. I, I think that's yeah. the, the way to go, but it's sometimes it's easier said than done. But it's really yeah. great that you started to do it, I think. Um, yeah, and and I, because, you know, I kind of became irritated and maybe mad when people assume that I'm under stress or yeah. that I can't perform in public because I'm too nervous or something like that. So I uh, started to tell the people immediately that I just have that condition so I can explain my sweaty hands. Yeah. That I can tell the truth and I not just um, try to hide it and I look even more nervous or something. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I, I think this is a really big problem as well that uh, people will misunderstand you if you suffer from hyperhidrosis. I mean, with the hands, that is a common sign of nervousness, of course. If you haven't heard about hyperhidrosis, that is your interpretation and it makes sense. I mean, it's not weird that people assume that. And then, for example, if you're sweating from your face, say if you're in an interview and it's running down your face, mm -hmm. for example, I mean, if people don't know that it's a medical condition, what should they think? So. We, we should cut them some slack in some way to, to, to know that it, it's not weird that they think this, but but to us, uh, it's very, very annoying and uh, a very, it's such an unfairness in to some ways. Uh, why should I be uh, 
perceived as nervous when I'm, I am not I'm not nervous but of course you will become nervous in that situ situation mm -hmm. and this is something that we really need to fight for and and uh, work against uh, and I think basically the only way to do that is to tell tell the truth this is a medical condition I'm not nervous I don't have that nervousness part that I have when someone is in laboratory with me and I have sweaty hands mm -hmm. Uh, then if the drops fall down, it would be like super weird. But if it happens to me when I'm all by myself, I just wipe it and I change the gloves and everything's fine. Did you try uh, like cotton gloves under your regular gloves? Uh, I never tried that. Um, yeah, I never tried that, but I don't know how it would work because uh, I mean, actually, maybe it could work because I, I could still change the gloves that are yeah. on top of yeah. that. But um, I never even think about it because because then I would have one more situation where I need to <laughs> explain to the yeah. other um, yeah. people in the lab. So yeah, now I have these extra gloves because <laughs> I yeah. have a condition. Yeah, yeah it's, I something also... to think about at least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's no. a good advice, so thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, maybe we'll try it. Yeah, you can think about it, but uh, I, th I think it's really great that you find iron freezes, and I must say that you know, I worked with uh, hyperdrosis in different ways for about 10 years on and off, and uh, uh, mostly I worked in a clinic where we used Botox or we used uh, medicine, uh, but I didn't, uh, we didn't have the iron freezes devices there, and it was considered like an old method and not. Uh, uh, state of the art anymore uh, where I was working uh, but then I got some questions from patients and I felt I need to educate myself if I was a doctor working in a sweat clinic I needed to know about this option and so uh, I started looking it up and then I ended up starting a company <laughs> that works with the uh, ion freezes devices uh, and I really come to know the method uh, over the years like about five years or so now and I think it's uh, a very good uh, option also. Uh, it's cost effective and, uh, but I mean, it doesn't suit everyone and it can be quite time consuming as you say, but for many it can be a good uh, choice. Uh, so I'm really glad I found that option as well. And uh, since uh, uh, research on hyperandrosis is not doing so well at the moment, <laughs> We, yeah. we need to uh, use also the older methods, I think, uh, to be able to help as many as possible uh, around the world. Um, and the, the thing that I see is that uh, when I, as a doctor, when I speak with my colleagues or I talk to patients and I try to explain the method, and I'm like, okay, so you have two electrodes and then you have water and then you have some uh, current through the skin and then you become sweat free and everyone is like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's yeah. not quite serious. Uh, For me, it has been really effective. And even if I, in the future, try some other method before my sweating, I know I would never stop using antiporosis because I can always do it at home. And, uh, you know, we, it's not, much that it takes 20 25 minutes a day so if i will have dry hands it is worth it yeah so and it's really easy to do yeah. and if you don't have any scratches it is not painful at all no did you have any side effects otherwise from except for when you have the scratches on your hands uh well uh, maybe some uh, i did sometimes but it was uh, only when i was doing it really uh, for for a really long time every day in a row mm -hmm. and then maybe after two weeks doing it every day my hands would kind of uh, scratch or um, like yeah we need to scratch it and maybe it would be a little bit reddish between fingers or something like that but it's not something that lasts but it passes maybe one hour after i did okay yeah. and it was only when i was doing it for a really long time every day but now when i do it uh, like this three four times a week i don't have any side effects yeah.